Good morning, Canada, and to all the dads out there, a happy Father's Day. Oh, today's video is going to be something a little bit different. You're going to have to mainly stare at my nasty face for the entire video instead of me just adding clips and music and yada, 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 and a lot of little interesting text clips. Today, what I want to talk about is the 13 people in government who need to be removed from government. And hopefully that happens with the next election. Preferably one or two of them, even a little bit before the next election, should be removed from cabinet at least. Uh, but hopefully by the time the next election comes up, we'll be getting rid of... Uh, all of them would be awesome. The majority of them uh, would be acceptable. A few of them, well, I guess we might uh, have to live with some of them getting re-elected and hopefully being on the opposition side uh, in the next parliament. So... Without further ado, let's take a look at those people. What we have here is Jesus Christ and the 12, I mean, Justin Trudeau and his 12 nasty ministers. These are the 13 people I believe right now need to be removed from government for one reason or another. Let us start with the least offensive probably or at least abrasive anyway of them all uh, Ms. Is Karen Gould who is the Minister of Families, Children and Social Development now for all those people that are standing in line waiting for their passports and not even being able to get it that day and having to come back that right there right, right, right there that right there is the person responsible for that uh, the lineups are getting ridiculous and if you want somebody to blame this is the person she says they're doing everything they can uh, but that doesn't seem to be a whole heck of a lot now whether she's doing this on Justin Trudeau's instructions or she's just incompetent uh, is irrelevant uh, she's messing up and she needs to be replaced after that, we are going to go talk about Mary Ng for a while. Now, what's so wrong about Mary Ng? Well, Mary Ng, let's not forget, very recently was caught hiring a close personal friend of hers uh, that runs a PR firm. A uh, $17,000 contract, I believe, that was solely sourced. It went straight to her uh, for nothing less than, um, what do you call it? PR training uh, to Mary Ng's uh, staff. After that, uh, let's go on and talk about Miss Anita Anand. Oh, it could be Mrs. I don't know. I don't really track their marital status. Anita Anand, anyway. Anita Anand is the Minister of National Defense. She is the one continuing to send all these weapons and everything else and ammunition and whatnot to Ukraine in order to fight a proxy war with Russia. Now, let's face it, that's exactly what it is. Uh, it's a proxy war. And she's either responsible for or just being a Trudeau lapdog uh, of increasing the chances that we have in the world right now of going into a third world war which Russia is threatening will be nuclear. For that reason, she's got to go. Next on the list, everybody's favorite criminal, I mean Minister of the Environment and Climate Change, um, Stephen Gilbo. Now, yeah, I just called him a criminal. Well, he was arrested uh, and charged, I believe. I don't know what the outcome of the charges were. Uh, for scaling the CN Tower. He, he's an activist. He's an extremist. He's an extreme activist, people. Uh, he can demonstrate uh, the way he wants in an illegal manner, but apparently truckers can't. Uh, so that's a problem. And if you want to blame any one person, really, for the price of gas right now, blame... Th again, I can't get this finger thing right blame this guy right here uh, he's the one driving up the price of gasoline right now which of course in turn drives up the price of everything because fuel is needed to transport uh, goods like food and things like that that's why the price of everything is going up because the transportation costs because of fuel prices 
are going up on everything. Next in line for the hit list uh, is Minister Bill Blair, the minister responsible for emergency preparedness. Now, if you happen to be in the camp that thinks that the trucker convoy in Ottawa was an emergency, well, your Minister of Emergency Preparedness wasn't very prepared. As you know, I call myself the Prepared Canadian. This is the Prepared Canadian YouTube channel. And I am into disaster preparedness. And let me tell you, the three-day uh, preparedness plan that this minister continues to push year after year in Emergency Preparedness Week simply isn't enough. We had nothing more than a thunderstorm or a windy, a windy thunderstorm roll over our area uh, about two weeks ago. And it took a week for every service to be restored. At one point, we had no cell service. We had no landline service. We had no internet. We had no power. Slowly things be, came back, but it took at least a week for everything to come back. So when you talk about be prepared for three days and after three days, the government will come and rescue. The government was nowhere to be found uh, and three days just didn't cut it. So Minister Bill Blair, you're not keeping up on things one way or another and you need to be replaced because of that. Next up on our list is Jean-Yves Duclos. Now he is the health minister. Remember those jabs everybody had to get? Remember the masking? Remember the mandates? That's the man responsible for it all. Well, him and Justin Trudeau, but again, either he's responsible or he's just being Justin Trudeau's lapdog. Either way, it's not right. Now, this man refuses to admit that the rest of the world has moved on from COVID and he continues to push for mandates. Now, yes, at this point in time, some mandates have been suspended, not lifted, only suspended. And when those vaccine mandates do come back, and given this guy's attitude, they will come back. He will find a reason to bring them back. It's no longer going to be just two jabs. You're going to need uh, at least one booster dose. And I think after a while, he would probably increase that to require two or more booster doses. Remember... In Canada, we are now giving out the fourth vaccine shot. So, uh, given this guy's attitude, that's only going to increase. Uh, we could see a fifth shot coming, I think, in the near future, uh, probably by the fall. But, uh, yeah, when the mandates do come back, and I think he's going to try at least to bring them back, uh, it's going to be for three doses uh, at minimum, possibly even four We'll see what happens when he brings them back. Omar Al Gabra. Oh my gosh, the transport minister. He's the guy keeping unvaccinated people off of planes. Because, of course, we all know that sitting beside someone who has not been tested for COVID but has a vaccine uh, is much safer to sit beside than a passenger on a plane who was just recently, within the past hour maybe, tested and tested negative for COVID. Yes, sitting next to someone who can transmit it and could have the vaccine uh, at that moment, that's much safer than sitting beside somebody who's just simply been tested negative at the airport before getting on the plane and doesn't have COVID. Let me tell you something, Mr. Algabra. A vaccinated person with COVID can transmit it much more easily than an unvaccinated person who does not have the disease. Remember, keeping the people who are infected off the plane should be number one priority. But no, you've gone the vaccination route, which makes absolutely no sense. And for that, you should be replaced. David Lametti. Well, here's one of the guys who was right there beside Trudeau when they announced the Emergencies Act. And by the way, that whole thing is falling apart in style, let me tell you. Uh, the further they look into that, the more it looks uh, like uh, Justin Trudeau and his cabinet are going to have some explaining to do uh, in regards to invoking the Emergencies Act because it looks like they didn't have the evidence uh, and the reasoning for it that they claim to have. 
David Lametti, as Justice Minister and Attorney General, is the one who dropped the ball on a, the extreme and tox self induced extreme intoxication defense. I drank myself into a stupor and therefore is not responsible for the crimes I committed at that time. Totally not right. Now you're trying to correct it, but only after uh, the issue has come up because, well, somebody got off using that defense or, or the Supreme Court has said that, yeah, the law says you can use it. So David Lametti, I don't know where you were. I don't know what you were doing. Paying too much attention to the Emergencies Act and, and all this other stuff uh, that Trudeau is pushing. And you drop the ball in your own file. Pay attention to what you're supposed to be doing or get out of the way and let somebody else take over. Preferably a conservative. Next on the list for people who need to be replaced, Melanie Jolie. Oh my gosh. Someone who went from a failed attempt to be mayor of Montreal directly to, what is she now? Uh, doo -doo -doo, where is she? Minister of Foreign Affairs. Is she the one driving the policy that, that, that is making the, uh, the economy what it is with all these uh, things that they've been putting on Russia? What do they call them? Sanctions on Russia? Well, you can't have been that serious about it because, as we now know, one of her staff members actually went to the Russian embassy to celebrate Russia Day. Yes, that's right. Drinking champagne, eating caviar with the Russians, while at the same time denouncing the fact that Russia has illegally invaded Ukraine. I thought we were supposed to be standing with Ukraine and... Uh, don't buy this thing that she didn't know about it or that she's terribly upset about it. Her department was informed that somebody was going to this uh, little garden party for Russia. And if she didn't know about it, she's incompetent. And if she did know about it, she just lied and really doesn't give a flying purple people eater. Either way, uh, you don't deserve the job that you have and you should be replaced. <coughs> Pardon me, bit of a tickle. It's not COVID, don't worry. Off to the next guy. Yes, in a recent video, I showed him having an absolute caffeine fit breakdown. Uh, in the House of Commons during question period, this guy's got to watch his caffeine intake, I think. He gets quite excited. Um, what's wrong with him? Well, this is the guy responsible for the online censorship bill, C-11, which has just passed, but hopefully the Senate will uh, put a stop to, or at least amend uh, enough that it becomes a, an acceptable piece of legislation. But, if you're a YouTuber, like me, or many others that are covering things that are going on in Canada right now, you should absolutely be looking to replace this guy get him out of office because he is going to make our lives absolutely miserable. Next, everybody's favorite liar, Marco Mendocino. Yes, that's right. This is the man who said that the police agencies asked for the Emergencies Act, which anybody who's paying attention to the inquiry into that now knows just is not true. Um, he should resign, uh, but he won't resign. And Justin Trudeau is not going to ask for his resignation because that would be admitting that he was wrong about the Emergencies Act and that would get the Liberal government into a huge pot of hot water. So should he resign? Yes. Will he resign? No. Will Trudeau fire him or demand his resignation? Not likely. The only way I see it happening is... If Trudeau gets really backed into a corner, he may fire him uh, just to throw him under the bus and save his own skin. Everybody's least favorite politician right now, right next to Justin Trudeau, the ever condescending Mr. Speaker. Let me tell you, and I'm going to woman-splain to everybody here the way the world works. Well, you're nothing but a journalist. Uh, and a flunky one at that. You, you were never very popular. I didn't. I never saw you as a journalist anywhere. So, you didn't make that great of a career out of it. Uh, Chrystia Freeland, uh, 
is the uh, what deputy prime minister and minister of finance. This is the person that is spending Canada into financial oblivion. Everybody else is helping out with that that I've already mentioned, but this is the one that just keeps spending the money. Now, when she absolutely had to make an address to Canada regarding inflation, which she denied for quite a while, then said was transitory and everything else, and we know that she's missed the ball on inflation seriously over the past six months. When she had to make an address to Canadians, she did so at a hoity-toity club in Toronto that charged $1,000 a table uh, for a lunch to hear her speak. Now, I don't know, you put five people at these tables. To me, the average working Joe does not spend $200 a seat for lunch. That's ridiculous. So in order to calm the people's fears over inflation, she went and she promoted her recycled ideas that were already in place from budget 2022, claiming that it's all new spending, which it wasn't. She decided that she should be addressing the elites, the rich, the people who can afford to spend $200 on lunch. You are so out of touch. You are obviously catering to the rich and the elites, and I don't know why you're still hanging around. Hopefully in the next election, they'll boot your butt as far out the door as they can. That, of course, brings us to Supreme Leader, Mr. Justin Trudeau. He's a narcissist. He refuses to back down on anything. He's been wrong on so many things lately, and he's not taking responsibility for anything. He's pushing forward with his agenda. He's in tight with Klaus Schwab at the WEF. He is selling out Canada's independence to the World Economic Forum, uh, the WHO, the United Nations, NATO, anywhere he can. This is a globalist. Let me tell you, if Canada has any hope of continuing as a sovereign nation and determining its own fate, this man has to be removed from office as soon as possible. Now, what's the, a lot of people say, well, it is a global society. Yes, globalization is a good thing. We need free trade with our allies across the world. It's how economy works these days. Globalism is not globalist. Globalist means that he's working towards being probably part of what would be considered a one world government. That is Klaus Schwab's idea. That is what Justin Trudeau has signed on to the WEF to do. And that's what he's trying to make happen. He's talking digital currency so we can track everything. You know, the government needs to track where you spend your money. Yeah, who knows how far that even goes. Uh, not just knowing where you spent your money, but what you spent it on. So, it's a little intrusive, Mr. Trudeau. Uh, you've messed up so many things uh, in this country, and you need to be removed from power. Let's take another look at these people. These are your 13 problematic people uh, in government right now. Back to my smiling face. Okay, so there you have it. There's my view on uh, the 13 people that need to be removed from government. Uh, the sooner the better, but not too soon. Remember, a lot of people are pushing for a no confidence vote and would love to see it happen tomorrow in the House of Commons. That's a bad idea right now. The Conservative Party is still uh, in its infancy of a leadership race and they're not going to be choosing their leader the vote happens i believe in september so come september we will know who's going to lead the conservative party and be running for prime minister in the next election and even in september it's not the right time because there's going to be a few months needed for whoever that leader is to come in present themselves to the canadians point out the problems get the ball rolling uh, and really set the tone for the next election. October, November, December, you know what? Next spring, January, February, yeah, late winter, January, February, 
uh, I think would be a great time to be looking at uh, a confidence vote or something like that that could get uh, these people out of office. In any case, um, again, happy Father's Day. Happy Sunday. I hope everybody's having a great day. And remember, an informed Canadian is a prepared Canadian. Hey everybody, if you like the content you're seeing on this channel, help force the YouTube algorithm to get the word out. Comment, like, and share this video everywhere you can. Together, we can get things done. We can get the word out.